You are now watching the first video in a series of 5 tutorials. You will learn how to create an animated short commercial. This commercial will be set up as a squared animation which is ideal for use on Instagram. This Adobe Animate CC tutorial actually starts in Adobe Photoshop CC. In here I have created a little character to promote a science museum's robots exhibition. As you'll notice the robot has been built up in layers. I have even put in a group of layers that will form the mouth. This will give the illusion that the LED lights in there are actually blinking. Let's check the names again of the layers. These names will show in Animate CC as well, so it's advisable to give these layers a logical name. Layer 1 needs to be Wheel in this case. All these layers need to be imported in Animate CC as Animate layers, so let's go to Animate CC. From the welcome screen you can choose from a lot of handy presets, but for this character animation we want to have a squared expert ratio like 1080 width and 1080 height. We will want to link all these layers together in order to move the complete character quite easily. For that reason we will leave the default action script 3.0 as it is. By selecting create the welcome screen will disappear and the interface of Animate CC will build up. The most important things for now in the interface are the stage and the timeline. We want to see our character on the stage and all the layers in the timeline below. Now go to file and import to stage to place the Photoshop layers directly onto your stage. This will give you a window with lots of information about your layers. But the most important thing is that you'll need to check if the layers will be imported as animated layers. The group of the mouth layers can be converted to a movie clip symbol, which will make the mouth layers easy to animate later on. You've now learned how to build up your character in Photoshop and how to import those layers in a new Adobe Animate CC file. Let's start linking those layers in the next video tutorial. In the second video tutorial, You'll learn how to link your layers together in order to animate your character easily. We have imported quite a lot of layers in this new animate file. Luckily I've named my layers so I know what content is placed on those layers. By default space is a bit limited within the timeline panel. We will pull the top end of the panel a bit upwards to balance the space between the timeline and the stage a bit better. Let's enable the show parenting view within the timeline panel. Linking layers allows you to rig the character. Just figure out what the most important part is of the character and that layer will be the parent of all layers. Of course children listen to their parents, so the idea of linking the layers is that you create a hierarchy of layers, children, listening to their parents. In this case the body of the robot is the most important part. It's also the easiest part to select and drag around. An arm is a child of the body. Let's select the arm, drag it towards the body layer and let go. Do the same for the other arm. To test if this works, please drag around the body and see if the arms will follow. Undo to put it back to the original position. Now link the wheel and the neck to the body. The head to the neck and the mouth eyes and eyebrows to the head. Give it one final check to make sure that all layers are attached correctly. With all these tasks done you are ready to animate the character. And that's what we'll talk about in the next video tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to discuss motion tween and graphic symbols in order to make our little robot move. So at first I would like to select my body and move it off stage. Um, when we clip everything that's outside of the, uh, the stage, our content, this is what uh, finally will end up in our export at the end. So it's always good to have a little clean look at what your product's going to look like. Of course I want to see my robot in order to make it move and I want to make use of the right click motion tween option. And the motion tween will uh, need our object to be a symbol. So I need to convert it at first into a symbol. So I'm going to go for a modify, convert to symbol and give it a name. 
body, for instance, and I'm going to leave that as a graphic symbol. And now what I need to do is right click and create a motion tween. And that will give us one second of time to animate. And of course, I can extend this to two seconds if I want to. Immediately, you will see that the only layer that has got uh, two seconds of time is the body layer. So I want to see everything else as well. So I'm going to select the final frames over here underneath frame number 60. I'll right click and just insert a frame. And that will keep everything visible until the end of the animation. The next thing that I would, uh, would like to do is make sure that my uh, robot makes an entrance. So I'm going to select my robot at frame number 20. Move it onto the stage. There we go. And this is our first animation. Now probably it will need to lean forward a bit to anticipate on the, uh, on the motion. So what I could do is rotate our robot a little bit. But that makes it rotate from the center of the, of the whole selection. I want to make it rotate right over here where it connects to the wheel. So what I could do is select the free transform tool, select the body and just move the white dot over here where it's connecting to the wheel. And now this is going to be the rotation. Looks much better. And when it comes to a stop, it needs to move backwards, forward again a bit, something like this. And while I'm doing this, it will make all these keyframes for my little robot. Probably it's a little bit too slow. So what I could do is just select all these keyframes over here, move them towards frame number 10, 11. When you've converted uh, an object to a symbol, they will live in your library over here. Um, so everything is already converted in here. Um, so I want to make a motion tween of the head as well. Um, let's right click, create motion tween. That will give me the same orange bar as well. And of course I will need to rotate the head a bit. Uh, but in this case, the rotation point is also on the wrong spot. So let's alter that in frame number one. Something like this. Of course, I would like to rotate the wheel as well. Let's select the wheel, which is already a symbol, a graphic symbol. When you double click on it, it will open up the wheel. So I'm not in scene one anymore, but in an underlying timeline. Let's convert this to a symbol as well. Because I want to make it rotate. Let's add a motion tween in there. Let's select the motion tween, search for the properties. And let's say, well, it needs to rotate about two times clockwise in the amount of one second. And we can already see that there's another extra keyframe. Let's go back to scene one and see if that works. Only it keeps on spinning in the end. Of course, when it comes to a stop, it will need to stop. So let's select it over here. Make another keyframe by hand with a right click. Insert keyframe. And because of the fact that this is a graphic symbol, we can say, well, I don't want it to loop anymore in the properties. I want it to play a single frame and it already uh, selects frame number 13 because that's the position where we are at the moment. And that will make sure that it will stop. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss the asset warp tool. This is a new tool and it's a fantastic tool to uh, deform your bitmap uh, graphics and your vector graphics. Um, the one thing that you aren't allowed to do is deform symbols. So in this case, the right arm of the robot was turned into a symbol, a graphic symbol. Um, I don't want it to be a symbol anymore. So I go to modify and break apart to make sure that it's a, that it's a bitmap again. And of course it does the same thing when you are working with your vector graphics. Just don't use symbols. So now what I can do is select the asset warp tool select the area where the hand should be of a robot and it immediately shows you the mesh of the arm. I can select the elbow area 
and the shoulder part. And now when I'm selecting the hand, it allows me to deform the arm. When I don't want to see the mesh, just disable show mesh. And now it uh, shows me what it looks like without the mesh. And when I'm going to start this animation, um, it needs to be somewhere over here, I think, to make it a bit more dynamic. Now when I want to let it come to a stop, the hand needs to swing behind his back a bit more, so I will need to create a keyframe. So this trick doesn't work with a motion tween. We will need to make keyframes by hand and use the classic tween instead. So let's right click on the location where we want to stop, insert the keyframe. Let's swing this one behind its back, this one as well. Of course, there's no animation in there. It's more of a stop motion right now. But when I add the classic tween with a right click in the middle of those two keyframes, classic tween, it will do the trick. There we go. And probably it's uh, starting a bit too soon with moving behind this back. So maybe it's better to make sure that this hand is a bit more off. Let's right click, insert the keyframe. And let it sit there a bit more. There we go. Another keyframe. Right click, insert keyframe. Make sure that there is another classic tween in the middle. And let's move it back again. Of course, we can do the same thing with the other arm as well. Let's speed things up in the recording. And that's how you can work with the asset warp tool. Pretty cool. And like I said, it also works on the vector graphics. So artwork made the illustrator or animate itself will work perfectly with the asset warp tool. Our video is almost done. Let's get ready to export out our video in the next tutorial. This is tutorial number five in a series of five tutorials where we've learned how to import Photoshop files, work with layer parenting, animate with motion tweens and graphic symbols. We have met the asset warp tool and our video is finally done and ready to export as a video file and we want to upload it to our social media channels and a very perfect format for that is to export it out as an mp4 file so when i want to export out i go to file export and then export video when you want to export out as a movie it will give you an swf file a shockwave flash file but i want to have an mp4 file in the end so i'm going to go for file export video and in here I'm going to double check the size, it's 1080 width, 1080 height, exactly the same as I started with, so that's perfect. And the option to convert it into the media encoder is enabled, and that will actually give me the mp4 file. I can browse to the select, to the location where I want to save it, and that's in my robot folder, so that's perfect. And now just export out the video, and that will render a high quality video file at first. So a huge file size, but in the end, this file will be converted in the media encoder into an mp4 file. So that's perfect for now. Export, it will render the video and open the media encoder and will give you the media encoder queue. In here, my file is, uh, is already waiting and I want to convert it into an mp4 file. And for that reason, I will need to select the h264 and that will actually give me an mp4 file. I'm going to leave the custom settings as it is. That was perfect already and when i scroll over to this end we can see we can check if it's an mp4 file and that's exactly what it says so let's start the render queue select the blue text over here and that will give me my final video file so this is our little character originally designed in photoshop animated in adobe animate cc and exported out as an mp4 file